What's the word, y'all? The Kawhi Leonard Paul George era with the Clippers is completely over, and I think we can all agree that it was an objective failure. In the six seasons, six seasons they played together, they have three playoff series wins. Three of them. That is insane. If you went back to July 5th, 2019, when Paul George was traded to the Clippers and told somebody back then, well, this trade is only going to equate to three playoff series wins, we would have called you crazy. Now, granted, one of those is getting to the conference finals and Kawhi Leonard got injured against the Jazz and who knows what would have happened if he would have got, if he would have stayed healthy. But that's like the whole story of this era. Since Paul George decided to sign with the Philadelphia 76ers, I went back to, to revisit those six years they played together. And we know the story of what the Clippers had become. It was like, hey, we're really good. We're going to make the playoffs. At least that one year they did it. We're going we're gonna to make the playoffs. But damn, something's going to happen. Somebody's going to get injured. Kawhi's going to be out. Paul George is going to be out. Something is going to happen. And well, they invested a lot in that core. And now they don't own any of their own first round picks to 2030. So right now they're sitting one foot in, one foot out with no real direction. 2030 is a, <laughs> that's a long time from now when you don't have, I can't say you don't have any young talent on the roster because I've been watching Summer League. If you know, you know, one of those guys, uh, sophomore year Jordan Miller might be kind of nice. Who knows? It is Summer League and sometimes you got to take it with a grain of salt, but I can't say they have no young talent on the team, but it is just a weird spot to be in when Paul George is no longer on the roster. But let me take a step back. One of my least favorite things in sports is that a lot of people have this revisionist history when it comes to things, right? When we're talking about a trade, the Paul George trade happened in 2019. We're thinking about it with the 2024 lens. And there are people now that are saying, I don't even know why they made that trade because now we know the results of it. But back in 2019, that trade made a lot of sense. Yes, I think we can agree that it was a, it was a, it was a swing. They were swinging for the fences. It was a home run or trying to hit a home run. But the trade makes sense. I remember having a conversation on Twitter, and I'm going to say conversation because it wasn't a debate. It wasn't an argument about the best player in the world title, right? And this was uh, two years ago at this point, but it, 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 it's important for this conversation where I was saying on Twitter, best player in the world for Nikola Jokic. Very simply put, this was two years ago even before they went on to their NBA Finals push. And I remember getting some, fee some feedback like, Kenny, how can he be the best player in the world when he doesn't have a championship? I'm like, huh? It's a, it's a very good question, Mr. Giannis Fan373. Your favorite player was widely considered the best player in the world before his championship. Oh no, Kenny, you bug it, you bug it. Guess what? The internet is free. And everything is well documented. So I went back and showed the proof of Bleach Report, ESPN, all of the people that do the top rankings, and Giannis was one or two, mostly one, even before he won his championship. And I feel like that's what's happening with the Paul George Kawhi Leonard thing. Back in 2019, when that thing happened, actually, I brought the receipt. Clippers acquire Paul George, recruited by Kawhi Leonard, and reported blockbuster deal with the Thunder trade grace. This is from CBS Sports. A plus for the LA Clippers, just an A for the OKC Thunder. Okay. Sports Illustrated. Clippers acquire Paul George in summer's most shocking move. Clippers. A+. Plus. Look at this. Whoo! Whoo! That's insane. Or well, what about this after the trade? Who will win the NBA title? 54.5% of the experts at ESPN voted the Clippers. 2019 rankings, projections, and big questions for all 30 NBA teams. The number one team. Plus 400 in odds. I know odds don't mean a lot. But number one team, the Clippers. And even the people that weren't completely, completely optimistic. Oh, what a, what a lob. Completely optimistic, like Kevin Pelton at ESPN. He gave the deal an A for OKC and gave it a B plus for the Clippers. And through all of my, my research, going back to these old articles and watching old podcasts, a B plus was the lowest I saw. So everybody, it was widely considered that this was a swing that was worth it. So yes, in 2024, we look back and say, hey, Shea Gilles Alexander is one of the top five players in basketball. That's a crazy trade. All of the draft capital gave up. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. At that time, it was the most amount of draft picks we had ever seen in a trade. Since then, we've seen Kevin Durant, Rudy Gobert, all these other people get traded. But at that time, it was the most amount of draft picks and Shea Gilles Alexander and everybody was like, makes sense to me. So yes, it, it failed. But in real time, it made sense. There's no way for the Clippers to have expected it. That, that that year when the Raptors went on to win their championship, that that would be the last real healthy season of Kawhi Leonard's career. And even in that season, it wasn't completely healthy, but he had a healthy playoff run. There's no way for them to have known that. And here's a playoff resume for Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, he has the crazy run in 2019. One of my favorite 
finals runs in history. Next year, they beat Dallas in the bubble. That was a legendary series. It went to six. It was super fun. And then they lost in seven to Denver. That's fine. Uh, a lot of people that was on that team, they've been on record basically saying that the bubble for the Clippers was maybe a little bit different than the bubble for everybody else. Whether it be um, Montrez Harrell, who wrote something for the Players Tribune talking about how rough of a time it was because he had lost someone in his family, how he had gotten into a big argument with Paul George and so on and so forth. Um, Lou Williams has also been very public about the bubble being different for them. And again, I'm not saying that their accounts of the bubble is is wrong so okay they lose in 2020 but i think a lot of people after that loss is still optimistic that the clippers can go on and make some noise the next season next season comes around they go to seven again with with dallas another really fun and electric series where paul george average i'm not paul george Kawhi leonard averaged 32 8 and 5 on 60 40 90 shooting splits he's back potentially the best player in the world can they go on and win a championship they go on to go against Utah, and I was at the game where, where he tore his ACL, but man, he tore his ACL right before getting to the conference finals, um, and then he he doesn't he doesn't play in the conference finals. 2022, if I'm not mistaken, they just completely miss it all to, altogether, and then 2023, he only plays two of the five games, and then this year, he only plays two of the five games. So the last time we really got a healthy Kawhi Leonard for a playoff run was in 2019. And that is a long time ago. And one of the worst things that could have happened with them losing Paul, losing Paul George, I honestly just believe that they didn't want him back. They had every opportunity in the world to give him what he wanted. And they decided that they didn't want to do that anymore. And then they eventually gave him what he wanted. And it was too late. The relationship was gone. But the worst part about it is Paul George now has this podcast where he can air it out. And honestly, we've only heard his side of the story I, i'm very in the middle on this whatever uh, the clippers will never really say what happened in these negotiations but we only have his account of all of it and basically his account was they offered me two years 60 million dollars i'm i'm better than that okay you want to offer me that just give me give me Kawhi leonard's number Kawhi leonard took less money to stay with the clippers i'll do the same thing let's just keep the core together they say ah uh, we want we don't want to give you Kawhi leonard money paul george say hey i right, bet how about you just give me a no trade clause? Didn't you tell me that you want me to be a Clipper for life? You told me that, right? Yeah, we told you that, but we don't feel comfortable with it. And that was enough for Paul George to go look other places. And he got a big ass bat with the Philadelphia 76ers. So now they have a team of, let's look at the depth chart. A projected starting lineup of James Harden, who they pay 70 plus million dollars to, Terrence Mann, Derrick Jones Jr., Kawhi Leonard, and then Zubac. And again, Kawhi Leonard is not playing in the Olympics right now to try to get ready for the regular season. Um, they also brought in Chris Dunn. They brought back Nicholas Batum, Mo Bamba. I think that all things considered, they recovered decently given that they didn't have a ton of money to even mess around with. But if I show you this, is this a team that you think it was really competing in the Western Conference? Probably not. Especially when you consider that a one injury to Kawhi Leonard turns this team from a from a potential playoff team to damn, we're giving up another lottery pick. And reminder, the last lottery pick they gave up was uh, Jalen Williams, by the way, just I, I ain't trying to be the dead horse, but they gave up Jalen Williams because they missed the playoffs that year. Um, so they're one foot in and one foot out, like I said early, in, earlier in the video, where they tried to, okay, we lost Paul George, who's an all-NBA caliber player. We're going to recoup and just bring in some good role players. Derrick Jones Jr. had a phenomenal season. He went from a guy that was widely considered the ninth or tenth man on a lot of rosters to starting and starting in the NBA finals. Like, that's huge. Can he continue to be that type of player? Chris Dunn is a really, really good pickup. I'm happy to see Chris Dunn stick in the league and get a three-year deal. That's amazing. But... You know, Mo Bamba, stretch, stretch five, I, I guess, can shoot some shots. Nicholas Batum was pretty okay. He had the one game in the postseason last year where he was the prime version of himself, but he's also closer to 40 than 30. So one foot in, one foot out. Because we haven't even talked about the fact that they have a brand new arena that is opening up this season. The idea of a rebuild doesn't make sense, especially when you can't do the thing that the Brooklyn Nets just did. Where the Brooklyn Nets traded some stuff and not only got a ton of draft capital from another team, but also got their own first round pick back. And that is maybe the smartest move of the entire offseason. If the Clippers decide to trade Kawhi Leonard and who knows what the Kawhi Leonard market will look like, of course, there will be teams interested, but you're not going to get this or this six first round picks for Kawhi because, again, he hasn't been healthy in the postseason since 2019. And general managers now are a lot smarter than general managers were 15, 20 years ago. It's like a name is on the block. Let's trade a lot for him just because of the name. No, teams are a lot smarter. The average NBA fan is a lot smarter, too. And we kind of see through a lot of the BS. 
So yeah, there would be teams interested in Kawhi Leonard, but you're not getting a Kevin Durant package. You're not getting a Mikael Bridges package for Kawhi Leonard right now. Unless we get to the deadline and he has been healthy and some teams like we're one piece away and we saw Kawhi can still be great. We just got to keep our fingers crossed and hope that he's healthy. And their first round pick this year, who would have guessed it? It's old to OKC. The first round pick next season, it's OKC or Philly. The first round pick after that is OKC. The first round pick after that is the Philadelphia 76ers from the James Harden trade. And then after that, it's the Philadelphia 76ers from the James Harden trade. They've invested a lot in this core for it to maybe be a playoff team this season. Now, I, I wouldn't be completely surprised if this is one of those teams that can sub shock the world and end up being a playoff team. But let's let's be let's be real. This team is not really competitive in a seven-game series. When you're talking about talking about winning the Western Conference, when you got to go through the OKC, the Denver Nuggets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Dallas Mavericks, the reigning Western Conference uh, Finals winner, like there are so many teams that I'm taking over this one in a seven-game series. And when you don't have your own draft capital to 2030, it's not a lot you can really do to say, hey, there's some teams that have done this. Actually, the Raptors that acquired Kawhi Leonard did this very well where for years the Raptors were a very good team, but nobody was looking at the Raptors to beat the Cavaliers in any series, right? But we're a really good team. We're one piece away. Let's just wait to see that one piece become available. Because you don't have any draft capital and because your team is, is taxed out, there's not like, oh, we're just going to stand pat and then acquire the next superstar player. It doesn't it doesn't happen like that. So new arenas open up. We don't have our own first round pick. Let's let's just run it back minus Paul George and hope that we're good enough to be competitive and good enough to maybe make a playoff spot. But recognize that our ceiling is what the first round, second round, maybe. But I will say in 20 in 2019, when this trade happened, pro probably 95 percent of GMs would have done the same trade. It was worth a shot. Paul George is coming off a top three MVP season. Kawhi Leonard here just went on one of the craziest playoff runs in recent history. It's worth it at the time, you know. Um, but everything doesn't have a storybook ending, a fairy tale ending. And because of that, we're going into the 2024-2025 season with a roster that's solid, but not solid enough.